Welcome to Bible Tract Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracts Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracts, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracts Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracts and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world, and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracts will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. Hello, my friend. Thank you for making this broadcast a part of your day. And I also want to say thank you if you're one of those Christians who are truly interested in growing in grace and in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. I hope that's your desire. I want it to be my desire day in and day out. Well, right now, my Bible is sitting open to the book of 2 Peter in chapter 2. If you can, get your own copy of God's Word out and join me there. Again, that's 2 Peter and chapter 2. In a moment, I will be encouraging you to get from us a sample packet, a free sample packet containing one each of all of our English gospel tracks, and I'm going to highlight one of those tracks here in a second. And by the way, we are into our 80th year of gospel tract ministry. For 80 years, God has enabled us to take the gospel message virtually all over the world in printed form. We would love to tell you more about the work that God is doing. I can verify in the last 14 years, over half a million people have responded to the gospel, receiving Christ as Savior as a result of receiving one of our gospel tracts. Now, God often used other things besides the tract, but it started by getting a gospel tract. In a moment, as I say, I'm going to be highlighting one of them. Let me lead into our time of Bible study this way. Are you against sin You heard me. Are you against sin? By that I mean, do you think that preachers ought to preach against sin? And do you also think that you and I as citizens in our own communities ought to take a stand against sin? Almost everyone agrees that we ought to be against sin. That is, until we start naming the sins. Sin is so easy to be against until you make a list of particular sins. And at that point, you and I then have to evaluate ourselves in light of the list. Well, here in 2 Peter 2, we are walking through a set of verses, and we are identifying a list of sins, a list of qualities and characteristics which God calls sins. God even says he's going to judge those that practice them. If you have have the stomach to handle the stench from this list, then get your Bible out, get a piece of paper out and jot some notes. Let's do what God has already done. God made a list, so let's get and make a list from God. Shall we do that? I'm excited that here this coming Sunday, I get to preach in my own home church. I'm not the pastor there, but I am a member of a local church. I get to preach in my own local church. Next Sunday, Lord willing, I get to be in Troy Baptist Temple in Troy, Ohio. If you hear us in that general neck of the woods, please come and visit us, see us. We'd love to meet you in person. Well, I mentioned the gospel tract here a moment ago. The one in my hand right now was entitled, You Can Know, followed by an exclamation point. You can know. The subtitle is this. You can know real answers to eternal issues. And what this gospel tract does, it leads into the gospel by saying this. You can know that the Bible has the answers to questions like this. Is there a hereafter? That's followed by a Bible verse. Is there a heaven? Is there a hell? Where do the saved people go at death? Where do lost people go when they die? But then it asks this question. Where will I go when I die? And at that point, point, the gospel, the gospel of Christ is laid out very clearly, very simply. It's a tremendous tool. I personally use this gospel tract a lot. You can know. Clearly written, beautifully done. Please let me send it to you. At the end of the program, my announcer will make known how to contact us. Get a hold of us. Give us your name and mailing address. We'll send you that free sample packet in the next business day's mail. If you can't stay to the end, just go to our website, which is www.bibletracksinc.com. 
BibleTracks.org. Remember the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S, BibleTracksInc.org. Org. If your Bible is open there in front of you, the book of 2 Peter, beginning chapter 2, verse 10, says this, But chiefly them that walk after the flesh in the lust of uncleanness and despise government, presumptuous are they, self-willed, they are not afraid to speak evil of dignities, whereas angels, which are greater in power and might, bringing not reeling accusation against them before the Lord, but these, speaking of these apostate false teachers, but these as brute beasts, natural brute beasts, made to be taken and destroyed, speak evil of the things that they understand not, and shall utterly perish in their own corruption, and shall receive the reward of unrighteousness, as they that count it pleasure to riot in the daytime. I'm going to stop reading right there. Now, here we're in a passage where verses 10 through 19 form the fourth section, at least in my outline, of the second chapter. The whole chapter here focuses on false teachers or people that I have called apostates. These are those teachers who like to be in Bible-preaching churches, but they don't like to preach and teach the Bible. They know what God's Word says, but they have rejected, knowingly rejected God's truth, and they teach things contrary to the Word of God. My title for verses 10 through 19 is this, Actions Worthy of Judgment. Actions Worthy of Judgment. Two things show up in the 20 verses in this little paragraph here. They show us the way that the apostates live, and then they show us the work that they do. Now, I'm using a series of words here in this section, all beginning with the letters U-N, to identify the way these false teachers live, or I could put it this way, the characteristics of their lives. On Monday's broadcast, I gave my first un word. It was the word unclean. That word is actually found in the first half of verse 10. Let me now go on and give you my entire list of these words, all beginning with the letter U-N. Are you ready? Here we go. Number one, as I already said, was the word unclean based upon the first half of verse 10. My second word is the word uncontrolled based upon the second half of verse 10 and verse 11. Word number three is the word uncultured based upon verse number 12. There the apostates act like beasts, brute beasts. Then word number four is the word unconcealed. Unconcealed dealing with the first half of verse 13. They're unconcealed in the sin that they practice. Word number five is the word unhealthy. They're unhealthy spiritually. That's the second half of verse 13. Word number six is the word unconforming. They're unconforming to truth based upon verse 15. And the last word is the word uncomforting. These false teachers are uncomforting in what they say because they don't solve the judgment on my sin. They have no answer for that. And we'll see that as we get to verse 17. We'll come now. Let's look at the second half of verse 10 and into verse 11. There, these verses say that false teachers are uncontrolled. They are uncontrolled in two areas of their lives. Verse 10 uses the word presumptuous. Now, it means that these apostates are very daring even to go after and willfully speak out against and say evil things both against earthly and heavenly authorities. You and I know that human authorities, whether they're political, whether they're religious, or even if they're in law enforcement, human authorities can do wrong things and they can act in wrong ways. And when they do, we need to confront them. But we have to do all this in a godly, careful way because all of these authority structures are set up and put in place and allowed to be there by God. They are his ministers, so we must confront them respectfully, do it truthfully, but do it respectfully. But these false teachers even willfully and and arrogantly speak against heavenly beings like angels. Verse 11 says that even holy angels don't act with this kind of presumption and arrogance, and they're powerful beings. That's word number two, uncontrolled. 
My third unword is the word uncultured based upon verse 12. Now, verse 12 says that these apostates act like brute beasts. They act like non-thinking animals. Now, I'm not a hunter, but I enjoy good hunting stories. A good hunter knows that his prey is going to act and react in certain ways. You see, animals act out of instinct rather than logic. So the hunter is able to outwit the animal that he's after. Well, just as an animal is hunted to be killed and used for food, verse 12 says that these false teachers are just as much headed for death and judgment. Verse 12 ends this way, that these false teachers are, and I'm quoting now, shall utterly perish in their own corruption. They're headed for judgment and death. My fourth word, beginning with the letters U-N, is the word unconcealed, based upon the first half of verse 13. The verse says this, that the false teachers shall receive the reward of unrighteousness as they that count it pleasure to riot in the daytime. Now, what does all that mean? Well, it means simply this. Unlike most sinners who try to hide their sinful acts out of the sight of others, remember Jesus said that men love darkness rather than light because their deeds are evil, sinners tend to want to be hiding their sin, but not these guys. These apostate people do their sins openly. They almost flaunt it. They don't hide in the dark, but rather they sin in an open and flagrant manner. They're not ashamed of their sinfulness, so they do it where others can see and they don't care. Remember now, these teachers claim to be Christians. They like to attend and belong to Bible-preaching churches, and they openly sin, and they say that because of God's grace, they can do whatever they want. Whenever you and I hear this kind of talk go on, and we see people who claim to be born again but show no guiltiness over their sin, we need to confront them with Titus 2, verses 11 and 12. It says, For the grace that brings salvation hath appeared unto all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly and righteously and godly in this present world. God's grace is of one caliber. It gives us the wisdom to see our sin, and it gives us the power to do righteousness because of God's power. God turns sinners away from sin by grace, oh my friend. Never tell yourself that God understands your sin and he won't bother you for it because of all the other good things you do. It is that sin that nailed Jesus to the cross of Calvary. If you're listening today and you have never had the sin stain taken off your soul, it is your sin that nailed Jesus to Calvary. He loves you, but your sin is a debt, a guilt debt. And it must be paid, and only Christ can pay that debt, but his payment only becomes valuable for you when you personally, by faith, receive him. Do that now. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Tract Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. Again, our phone number is 309-828-6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.